Hey, Ben, how are you? Thanks for joining. And hey. let, me, let me reshare. And there we go. All right. So thanks for joining and thanks for, uh, yeah, we had to push this uh, out to this week because uh, several of us were in at, at Get Let Commit last week. Um, so without further ado, we'll get started. So I've got a uh, few things on the agenda. Just wanted to do a follow up on, uh, we, I think we officially closed the uh, GitLab FOSS repo on September 23rd. So just did some uh, quick check on MRs that were over close, uh, auto close. So I'll talk to you th about that uh, in a bit and then uh, contribute 2020. Uh, it's official, it's gonna be in Prague. Uh, similar to this year, we are planning to invite wider community members, so wanted to get your thoughts on that. Uh, again, it's hackathons coming up in about a month, so just a quick heads up there. And uh, I think, George, you had a couple of ideas or, or issues to, um, to enhance uh, the web pages, for one for the core team and the other was for the heroes pages, I believe. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, that's right. we can spend some time on that. Uh, and obviously, like any other topics that you guys want to add, I mean, let me know. And then, as a re oh, thanks. Like people are already uh, jotting down notes there, so appreciate you guys doing that. Um, so let's move on. Um, so as I noted earlier, uh, I'm this single code base move that uh, I mean, we, I think uh, you know we. We started this in earnest in, in August, and and um, uh, I mean there are a couple of blog posts and announcements and and messages on MRs uh, giving heads up about the uh, single uh, move to a single code base, and I took a snapshot of MRs uh, that were still open um, in GitLab FOSS like a day or two before uh, the cutoff uh, around the 23rd. Uh, and then you'll see the Google sheet there. There are about 150 MRs that uh, were still uh, uh, acted up on before the auto, auto, auto closing of those MRs. Uh, and I think I followed up on about half of them. I mean, what I try to do is uh, follow up on MRs that were like a, uh, open within the last three to four months. Uh, and as you can see in that Google sheet, let me just go there so people can see it. Uh, I mean, I, I mean, it's not like really elegant. I try to write down dates on when some of the MRs were followed up on. I mean, some were done by me, uh, and some were done by other reviewers. Uh, like, I mean, for example, like Evan Reed did a good job of following up on on some of the simple documentation documentation changes to encourage them to open a new MR on 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 GitLab. Uh, but as you can tell, uh, I mean, I vast majority of them, uh, I mean, people haven't been, like necessarily have been very responsive. Uh, when I, uh, I'm basically asking them if they were planning on continuing their work on, on their MRs that were, that were open. I mean, as you can see, there were a lot of them uh, that were uh, open like pretty recently uh, in like, uh, like early to mid September. Uh, so, uh, the fact that I mean a lot, a lot of the contributors have have not been responsive is is a little bit of a concern. I think for some of them, uh, like some of the documentation ones that were pretty simple, I think we can ask uh, reviewers or coach to like to finish. Um, I mean, just open a new MR, just finish up the work. Um, but the concern is, I mean, some of the MRs might be going inactive or or going stale. I mean, some of the MRs that are you know, pretty old, like six months or older. Um, uh, I'm not terribly concerned about. That's why I try to focus on MRs that were open from like June and onwards. Um, so just wanted to share that um, data with you. I wanted to see if anybody had any thoughts or suggestions on how we can address some of these MRs. And I mean, some of you may have been pinged by me directly. Uh, I mean, there were some of the MRs that were opened by uh, folks that are on the call, uh, and uh, so you probably seen those reminders that are that were coming from me. But I don't know if people had other ideas or suggestions on on uh, how to move forward on on some of these contributions. 
So not Sharon specific suggestions, yeah. but um, the ones that you pinged me on, I intend to do just have been super busy recently. So no, no, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you folks, I weren't, I wasn't too worried about it. It wasn't because you didn't know how to do one, but it, I figured you guys were, were busy, but Uh, sorry, Ben. I mean, I, I think I may cut you off. Was there anything else or like? Not really. I mean, I, I would agree with what you just said, though, like the ones that look like they're pretty much done and just really need to get ported over, then mm -hmm. we should probably figure out a way to do that. The ones yeah. that need a bunch more work, that's a different story. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. So I don't know, maybe uh, Ray, it, like there could be an evolution of your document there, trying to figure out which ones are easy ones that we should just figure right. out how to get done. Yeah. Yeah, that might also be uh, an easy start for people who want to contribute uh, in the next hackathon, I guess. Just port over some existing MRs. So. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I mean, thanks for the idea. I'll probably, uh, you know, it's not too many, although I, I probably should have spent more, more time on this. There are about like a 75 or so that, uh, that I, uh, myself or other people have followed, followed up on. So maybe we should do another level of triaging and identify ones that are easy, um, and give contributors, uh, our few more days to, um, I mean, like, a, a few days to sort of make a decision on whether they want to continue or not. If they're not responsive, maybe we should just um, assign them to uh, like reviewers or, or coaches to sort of finish their work. Uh, so I hate, hate to see those like go to waste. We could also ping uh, stage uh, managers that uh, they could also help picking this up. Yep. Cool, just showed down some notes. Um, and the other thing I wanted to see was that if there was a slowdown on contribution uh, right after a uh, move to a single code base. Um, and um, what I did notice, uh, it wasn't last week, but the week prior, uh, week of the September 30th, I did notice that the, um, the volume of contribution were, were down uh, for some reason, and I'm not, 100% sure if that's due to um, the single code base move, or I mean, I mean, uh, maybe there are other reasons for lower volumes of contribution. But when um, I added a link there on the slides to uh, to the dashboard, the number of MRs that uh, that came in after the cutoff, like starting on September 23rd to yesterday, was significantly lower than the previous three weeks. Um, so I, and I, I mean, fortunately the volume seemed to have picked up, uh, to a normal pace, uh, like starting last week. So hopefully that was a, I mean, temporary blip. Um, but is the, yeah, it, yeah. Go is ahead. the number of people doing MRs similar? Cause I, I, in some ways, I think the number of MRs is maybe not the best reflection. Like, okay. Because, like, for example, it could be that, you know, someone who's really active with MRs was, you know, on vacation or busy or something. Some right. like, I know there's weeks where I'll do 10 and then there's three works where I'll do none. So, yeah, I mean, that's a good point. I don't think I looked at that, but that's something I can look at. Because I would think if the number of, like, you know, the average number we're getting per week it has mm -hmm. gone down, then that might be a little bit more concerning because... Uh, right you know, I don't know, do people get lost in the process somehow? Right. I mean, overall, I mean, my initial uh, impression, like, especially during the first week, I didn't see any, like, a whole lot of slowdown uh, in terms of contributions and a lot of, uh, I mean, I saw, like, a normal amount of com community contribution 
uh, come in. And then for some reason, like the week after, it, it sort of, sort of like it was noticeably like slow. I mean, the number of MRs that I had to triage, it seemed like the volume was significantly lower. Um, but maybe that was just a blip. Uh, but I mean, that's a good point, Ben. I'll, I'll see, uh, also check in terms of the number of contributors, not just contributions. Um, but I mean, starting last week, it seemed to have sort of gone back to normal. I mean, I normally see about um, like a seven to 10 per day that, that sort of get uh, labeled by the bot. And it, we seem to be back to somewhat the, the normal volume. So hopefully, um, that hasn't caused a whole lot of confusion. I mean, I don't know if you, like people that are on Gitter on a regular basis, I mean, there was somebody who posted a few days ago, uh, said something about what happened to the CE repo and, and another community member chimed in and reminded them about, um, about the single code base move. So uh, definitely not everyone was aware of it, but hopefully, uh, you know, we're not gonna see like a continued slowdown of, of contribution, but just wanted to uh, quickly share that, and um, I mean, see if you guys have any thoughts or or suggestions. But I mean, so far, like overall, so far, it's, it seems to be good. I mean, there was, there wasn't a whole lot of impact on like the hackathon. I, uh, uh, Yorick and others were accommodating around the hackathon contribution, so that was that was very helpful. Mm -hmm. um, so. Yeah, I think as, as, as long as it does uh, temporary bleed, perfectly okay. Yeah, I mean, people had, had to set up uh, or reset up their uh, uh, the development environments a little bit at least. Uh, so not everybody did have time to do that immediately. I guess as long as it's, as it's not something permanent, it should be okay. Right. Right. Yeah, I mean, I think like, I mean, shortly afterwards, I made the necessary documentation changes and I made a blog post as well that, I mean, I know at least one person's read it because somebody reached out to me after the blog post. Um, so hopefully word's gotten around and you know, we'll, we'll keep watching the, the, the number of contributors and contributions in the next couple, couple of releases. Maybe people had uh, just been uh, contributing the single code base challenge for three weeks, and now they are at last able to contribute. Yeah, yeah. So, well, yeah. So we'll keep an eye on on things and see how things go. But uh, I mean, it's like like I said, the last week or so, the things look uh, pretty normal. But we'll we'll see if that's not the case. Cool. Right. Yeah, I think I think, yeah, go ahead, I think I've George. asked this before, yeah. but uh, yeah. this uh, the, the dashboard includes all repositories under the GitLab or group, group, right? Yeah. Oh, go that's ahead. a good point. I should have probably just isolated uh, GitLab and not the rest. But mm -hmm. one point is that, and yes. uh, I think there is a missing repository there from the design system that I'm not seeing in the dashboard you sent. But I think we we have, okay. we have had the URL a few a few months ago. But yeah, then, they should have updated that. But mm. yeah, they, they should have updated that URL because they noticed that even before I was about to report it to them. Um, mm -hmm. But let me just double check. It's possible that there weren't any contributions. Uh, but I know you, at least you made one or two contributions to the design system, right, during that period. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, let me double check. Uh, Cool. All right. So moving on. Uh, contribute 2020. Um, so I, uh, I, I think it's old news uh, by now, but we'll be in Prague in, in March. I don't uh, know the dates, but I mean, if you click on the page, you'll, you'll see it. Um, the plan, I mean, and you'll, you'll probably all remember, I mean, most of you were in, in New Orleans uh, several months ago. Uh, we had, uh, I mean, two wider community members join us outside of the core team. Uh, you know, Marcel, I mean, that was before he joined GitLab at the time, and, and Hiroyuki. 
um, uh, uh, joined at us at the event. So it was it was nice to have a uh, 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 you know more community members participating uh, with other GitLab team members. Uh, and the plan, I mean, we still and the, we should still have a budget to invite uh, wider community members uh, so that you know dollars and to support like a travel sh shouldn't be an issue. Uh, and I mean, we definitely want to have more than like a couple of people like like join us at the event. Uh, I mean, we did definitely reach out to a lot more people uh, prior to New Orleans, but uh, for I mean. For whatever reason, I mean, a lot of people had conflicts or just, you know, were unable to take their take time off uh, to travel to New Orleans. So uh, we'll to try to do an outreach a uh, little earlier so people can plan around the event. Um, and, and the other thing we want to do is we definitely want to invite more diverse group of people. Um, you know, we definitely looked at like contribution in terms of like a code contributions or um, um, but you know, we also have the Heroes program where we're trying to recognize a wider pool of uh, you know uh, contributors to the community outside of uh, uh, typical contribution through repos. Um, so, if you have any suggestions on like a specific individuals or or type of people that we need to think about, um, I would definitely welcome your feedback. And I think. What we did for this year's event, I mean, as we're uh, building a list of people that we wanted to invite, I think we ping, uh, I mean, a lot of you folks to to validate that the list uh, looked uh, reasonable and, and that we weren't like really missing anything. We'll probably do the same thing. Um, but, uh, you know, not necessarily in terms of like specific individuals, but, um, I mean, the group of people or type of people that, that we may have missed in the past. I mean, I don't know if you have any thoughts on like who else we should be thinking about or reach out to. Any thoughts or ideas or? Maybe, um, yeah. maybe some people that are localizing GitLab, like that are working in, in Crodin. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I think yeah. that these people are kind of the invisible uh, right. sometimes. Yeah, yeah. I definitely agree. I think uh, we try. We reach out to a couple of like a proofreaders uh, for New Orleans, and then, but I don't think there were that many people uh, that we reach out to. Maybe it was like a two or three people, and 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 none of them happened to be available. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, I think. Yeah, localization is, is something I was thinking about as well. I mean, proofreaders is, um, I mean, outside of like this group of people, I don't think many people like even at GitLab are uh, aware of the fact that we have a crowding platform and, and then our, our software is available in, in, in uh, different languages and it's completely driven by people outside of GitLab almost entirely, right? I mean, we, we help here and there, but, um, yeah, I mean that's a good point. Uh, and then, I mean, I have I'll I'll talk to John Coglin about uh, people in the Heroes program, but people that have been active in organizing like meetups. I mean, I think those are good 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 natural candidates. Um, but yeah, if you think of others, uh, even specific individuals, um, uh, let let me know, or even like David or John Coglin. Uh, and then we'll definitely like factor that in. I mean, I, you know, I think like I may not be remembering the fi figures correctly. I think last year we had budget to like have like ten ten people like join us outside of the core team, which which is a pretty decent sized budget. But I I think we uh, we want to so even go beyond that number and see see how we do it for Prague. Cool. Uh, any other thoughts or feedback and let us know. And hopefully many of you guys can join us. I mean, for, for a lot of you, I mean, fortunately the travel should be a lot shorter uh, going to Prague. Uh, so, so, I mean, we, we do have a lot of core team members in, in 
Central European time zone. So like, a, you know, hopefully just one flight over for, for a couple of hours, it should definitely be a lot easier. Um, and yeah, less issues with visa, visas as well, hopefully. But. Cool, okay. Uh, I'll move along. Um, so Q4 hackathon, believe it or not, it's, I mean, I, I was just talking to somebody about like the last hackathon. It, it felt like we just had one like two weeks ago, but that was, I noticed that it's almost like a two weeks ago now. So the next one is coming up. Uh, so we'll, you'll probably see uh, the same sort of a social campaign on, on Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook like we did um, last time. You know, I, we thought the social campaign was pretty successful, so we're pre pretty much going to use that same template uh, with our social team. And I'll be, the plan is to update the hackathon pages like this week uh, with prizes, and I'm finalizing some of the tutorial sessions, although we might add more uh, in the next next few weeks so you'll probably see the hackathon page updated um, I mean, hopefully sometime in the next couple of days um, and I mean that, again like appreciate everybody's help last time around uh, not just with your MRs but uh, I mean I was joking with George I think I woke up like on day two uh, thinking I'm gonna have to triage a lot of the community contributions but um, they're pretty much done by George by the time I got up so that was that was a nice pleasant surprise uh, especially with the volume of MRs we, we're, we were getting last time around. Um, and coaching and reviews, uh, I mean, helping with reviews on not just on MRs, but helping people out on Gitter uh, was um, uh, was obviously pretty successful. I mean, what I did notice uh, on Gitter, uh, the, the contributor channel, we're now up to like 340, 350. Uh, I mean, if you remember, like the first hackathon, we had like 40 people on there. Uh, so every time we do our hackathon, it seems like we were adding us uh, quite a number of people. Uh, and it, it's slowly becoming a forum where, I mean, people are, a lot of the contributors are like helping each other and interacting with each other. So uh, your presence there is, is, uh, is very much appreciated. Um, and I mean, for those of you that, that were, I mean, the participated in the last one, I think ob obviously like Jacopo and George, I don't know if you have any other thoughts about uh, what else we might try to do or things that we can improve on for, for the one next month. But I mean, feel free to jump in here. Um, um, maybe not for the kickoff, but afterwards, uh, I wonder if you uh, already analyzed the amount of person that uh, contributed to the previous hackathon and to the next one in order to find out uh, if they repeatedly um, contribute to the, the hackathons so that we don't lose the uh, persons. Yeah, I mean, that's a good point. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, if you think about it, there are like a, like a, uh, a number of people that sort of uh, make, uh, uh, make their presence felt like it, at hackathons, but do they repeat over and over again. I mean, that's something I haven't like really looked at, but I mean, that's a good point. Uh, I mean, there was if like- If you can keep yeah. them, we can always improve. That's right, right, right. That's a good point. Uh, I mean, like somebody, like, I mean, a couple of people that won the grand prize la from, from the last time, I mean, they were somewhat new, but we'll see if they, you know, keep coming back for more. Uh, that's a good point. I wonder, uh, Ray, on your last topic about, you know, trying to figure out people to invite to contribute, if there's some yes. sort of connection with hackathons that we could, we might want to think through. Like if yes. there's some people who are really active or like, I don't know if you could use it as a motivating factor mm. or, you know, not sure exactly, but something to think about. Yep. All right, yeah, good point. All right, 
so oh and the final thing about on the hackathon um so the next the the start of the hackathon conflicts with the next scheduled core team meeting so i mean one of the i wanted to ask if we be okay to i mean push out the core team meeting again for 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 to the following week uh for november um and i assume for most people it'll be okay but just wanting to ask if there are any concerns if we did that but sure okay, okay. No problem. Cool. all right now let me write that down Right. Yeah. I mean, I'd rather have the core team meeting like after, like after the hackathon, so we can um, provide a recap of what happened the previous week or at the hackathon. Cool. So that's just a quick update on the hackathon. Uh, for enhancements to the web pages, I mean, George, I'll turn things over to you and let you cover those topics. Thank you, Ray. Yeah. So. Well, the first point is about you having a popovers in the core team page. We discussed this in the past, uh, similarly to the company team page. It should be relatively easy to, easy to add this uh, using the Humble template existing in the team page. I didn't, I didn't have much time to do this yet, but uh, feel free to jump in in the meantime. I think we, we have uh, reached a consensus to add this, right? Uh, Jacobo, Vitali. Yes, yes. And the second one is about uh, making the hero's page more visible. Uh, I just noticed that uh, it was uh, hard to get to the list of the hero's page. Uh, so just simply adding a button on the header section could help uh, people uh, get faster to the hero's list. Not sure if you have any feedback on this. It could be, we could try this uh, in another way, but. I think this is the simplest uh, change that could help. Yeah, I'm guessing if as long as like I mean John's actually at a different conference another conference this week, but as long as he's okay with it, um, yeah, I'm sure you can just um, mm -hmm. submit an MR and have have John. Uh, the reason about it is like at the yeah. bottom of the page, but it. Uh, Maybe it's uh, hard for some people to locate this. Yeah. No, I mean, uh, I, this is actually like I, I noticed this too at at because uh, we had the heroes booth at at commit last week, mm -hmm. and then one of the things I went to sh show people was the the roster of heroes, right? And I had to like really scroll down like all the way to the bottom to mm -hmm. uh, to get to the page, and that's where I sort of stopped scrolling, and I, I just left the screen there so people can see the roster of people because. Uh, I mean, I think that's more important than like other like overview and like a benefits type of stuff that's on the web exactly, page, yeah. right? So mm -hmm. I, people want to see who the other heroes are. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's more inspiring. So I, yeah, I think this is a good point. Like it's, it, I definitely noticed that when when David and I are in the heroes booth. So cool. In the yep. future, we could also swap the the heroes list to become the first page and uh, the details on how to become a hero, just a secondary link. So it mm -hmm. could be easier to go directly to the people, just like they were right. recording and right. how you apply in another page. But right. can discuss this further. Cool. Okay. Yeah, I don't think there are any concerns or objections on either one of them. Yeah. Oops. Cool. Let's uh, we'll just move on and see if uh, people have any other topics or 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 comments or anything else that you guys want to discuss. So, uh, I mean, just because you guys had up the the heroes page here, kind of out of curiosity, I'm I'm kind of curious, like why, like you know what some of these people did that got them to become a hero, um, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, I mean, that's a good question. I mean, we I actually got the same type of questions at, in the booth last week. 
so I think there are like broadly like a three categories. I mean, one are, I mean, people like anybody on the core team that applied, I mean, basically you got approved, right? Cause it, because the amount of contributions you guys made were, uh, are pretty obvious and well known. Uh, the second group of people uh, are people that are very active in organizing like meetups in their local communities. Like, I mean, we, we had somebody, uh, Adrian, I believe, yeah, Adrian's a name, like uh, somebody who's been very actively uh, talking about and organizing GitLab meetups in, in Cape Town. Uh, so he, he joined us in, in London. So that's one group of people. And I think the third, I don't think I met people in that category are people that are doing a lot of uh, write-ups uh, like blogs on, on GitLab, uh, on, on GitLab, sorry. Um, so basically people that are, I mean, spreading the gospel or evangelizing GitLab uh, in, in their local communities or, or, or you know, through, through their write-ups. Uh, so those are like the three three broad categories, or people just going to conferences and and talking about GitLab as well. So those are just the main categories. Then um, I don't know if that helps, but yeah, I mean it wasn't really that I cared like per se. It's just like looking at this page, it's not immediately clear. Some people oh, okay. it is, but right, some people right. it's not. It's like you know, uh, web engineer developer, right? Like mm. uh, you know. Do they use GitLab? Do they talk? Do talks for GitLab? Like right. You know. uh, okay, I see where you get. I mean, I think that's actually a good point. Uh, maybe uh, having a short blurb like a bio on on how they contributed to the GitLab community is is something that might be helpful. So, let me actually pass that on to John. So. Yeah, and it looks like the page is set up to kind of, you know, like we already have a little blurb section. It's just a matter right. of, uh, I mean, people, including myself, going mm -hmm. in and, you know, adding one. But some some further encouragement along those lines. Um, and then to, you know, because I think it, it almost looks like some of these people were encouraged to go put in MR with details. But it's like, well, they put in their job title as opposed to their connection to GitLab. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. Because I think that might help other people who are interested in applying. It's like, well, am I yep. qualified? Yep. Right. So you get some right. examples. Right. Yeah. I mean, the other thing I talked to John about, uh, I mean, it was also in the future allowing, like, uh, uh, like allowing people to nominate other people, uh, right? Because right now it's all like self-nomination, right? I mean, for example, like Ben, if you wanted to like nominate somebody that that we don't know about in, in the local Southern California area. Uh, I mean, I, I think that would be a good feature to sort of add at some point. Um, but uh, yeah, that's some things that, that sort of uh, John's been thinking about as well. But, but no, this is a good point. Like, you know, what their connection is to GitLab is, is probably a good thing to add. So I encourage people to do that uh, as they add themselves on the heroes page. Well, yeah, I think we're up to like uh, John mentioned that we're up to like 39 people, which is cool. Um, so, um, all right. So, uh, any other topics or or discussions people want to have? Yeah, sorry for my voice. Like, uh, it's like weird allergy season going on in Northern California. So I'm a little bit congested. But... Well, all right, well, uh, thanks again for, for your time and we'll do this again next month. Thank you. Yeah, have a good day. Take care. Bye. Bye.